Pastor Varun and Pastor Da Lahaprasit would like to welcome you to the following message from New Hope International Church, Seattle, Washington. Here is Pastor Lau's dynamic teaching that will change your life with love, hope, and peace in Jesus Christ. Because of the limited time, I will exhort you and I, I would not be able to go through the whole lesson about the promise of the Father, but I would like to just exhort you today, encourage you, amen, and to just build your faith up to run the marathon, to keep on going, and believe that God will do great things among you, amen. amen. As you know, um, lately our, uh, uh, when I say our churches, because we are in the same bank account together in heaven, amen, amen. whatever happened, good things that happen in this world through New Hope International Church in Seattle is also part of your account because we are in the same family. In fact, um, when God look at us, He does not look at us as one church and another church. Yes. He look at us as one, yes. that we serve God together in the same family of God. But we are just in the different cities. But God look at us Whatever, you know, we, whatever happened here, we also get the account too. Whatever happened in Seattle, you also get that reward in heaven too because we are serving together. We, we support one another and build one yeah. another up. And many of you have known already that we, one of the uniqueness that we have in our churches is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or revival or the... the, the the outpouring of the fire of God. Amen. We have other things too. We have fellowship. We have care groups. We have um, teaching of the word of God. We have you know, a strong discipleship, training leaders. We, we try to do everything what the Bible says. But one of the unique things in our churches that we build together right now all over the world is the church that is full of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And in that outpouring, we can see miracle happen, supernatural happen. Do you know that the supernatural thing happen not because man make it up, but because we welcome and usher the presence of God. Amen. Why miracle happen in the time of Jesus? Because Jesus has the presence of God or the anointing or the Spirit of God without limit. Amen. Amen. I tell you, I came out from Buddhism. I've seen, I saw so many miracles in Buddhism. I saw miracles. I saw power of darkness mm. moving. I mean, you are in America, you may never see those kind of things. I've, I've seen so many miracles happen in the, in other gods, but have you seen miracle in churches? Rare. Is that right? Why? Because as Christians, many times we just go through the mechanism of the church, but we never allow God to show up and do whatever He wants. Amen. So you just come to church singing a few songs and then Listen to preaching and go home. Life never change. People are the same. Never, never change. Nothing happened. Demon never been cast out from people. People still are bowed. Sickness is all over the place. But I believe that our God is never changed. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. If Jesus healed the sick many years, uh, many hundred years, thousand years ago, Jesus still want to heal the sick. Yes. If I Jesus yes. cast out demon. He still want to cast out demons today. Yes. Amen. 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 He has never changed. But the problem is this, that we are the one who block him. Yeah. We are the one who say, get out of here, God. I want to run my own things here. I want to have my own agenda here. You cannot do anything in my meeting. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So we, we, we need to allow God we need to allow the Spirit of God to have freedom in the church. Amen. Amen. Yes. 
and we need to settle that that decision, that commitment to God. That God in our church, the Holy Spirit will have freedom to do anything in our midst. He has the free reign. Yeah. He can do anything. And don't be ashamed of the Holy Spirit. You know, when you invite friend to church, you are just, you, you don't be ashamed. You say, oh, you know, if you come, maybe this. You say, hey, my church is revival church. My church, the Holy Spirit is moving. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. People fall under the power. People laugh. God is moving. Miracle yeah. happen. Demon come out. <laughs> You know, I will never be a chain. When I talk to my patient, I say the same thing. I invite my patient to come to church. I never say, oh, I'll come, oh, maybe, um, please show up. I say, you know, you come to this church, you're going to see Holy Spirit is moving. Hallelujah. Be upfront. That's how we are. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's how we are. So we, we, don't, we don't need to be a chain of the Spirit of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Otherwise, we're going to just have church, but we don't have God. We will have a nice meeting, but God is not there. Oh, I, I forget. I just say a while ago that I came out from Buddhism. I saw all the miracle. And when I first became a Christian, going to a church in Bangkok, I was wondering why is nothing happening here. Why I just listen to good, good word and go home and never, never see miracle happen. And I say to God, God, you know, if I'm going to become a Christian, I want to become like the four gospel Christian, yeah. the book of Acts Christian. Amen. I want to see whatever happened in the time of the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I did. When I went to Thailand in the past few years, I saw so many miracles happen. Demon came out. I didn't even talk about demons. I lay hands on people. People's demons just came out from people. Yes. People get healed. People with back pain jump up and run around. You know, people with um, a problem. One lady came in, couldn't walk. She's, she came in like this, couldn't walk. And she know that demons are around her everywhere. She, she, she said that no church in Thailand could get, get rid of demons out of her. I lay hand on her. She fell under the power. Demon came out. She began to speak again. She began to get up and walk again. I mean, she was healed little by little. Every single day, I mean, people can see the change in her life. Amen. Every single day when she came to the meeting. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to see that kind of thing in America? Yes. Amen. Um, you know, Unfortunately, most of the time, the meeting in America are so far away from the book of Acts. Far away from what we see in the book of Acts. But we're going to bring that to Phoenix. Amen. Amen. We're going to see that in this city. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> we're not going to just have a nice meeting. We're going to believe in the power of God. We're going to yes. believe that the God is going to change us and, and move us. How, how can we do that? Look at James chapter 4, verse 8, the Bible says. James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. There is one thing that we can do to move God into our midst. And we have to move first. You understand what I'm talking about here? God will move close to you when you move first to Him. God is ready to draw near to you. He is waiting there. But He wants you to be the one who make the first step. He are, he's already there. He wants to touch you. He wants to do something with you. He wants to come and touch you and change you. And He wants to visit your church. He wants to show up every Sunday. He wants to show up even in your bedroom. Is that right? Yes. I, I shared yesterday that I had an awesome time yesterday morning in his home. I was uh, spending time praying and memorizing the scripture. Then God showed up in the room and I got drunk in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and I was laughing and got drunk. I, I tried to hold my, my voice back because I don't want to wake them up. Because I really, I mean, Pastor Da looked at me and said, again, he got drunk and God show up in the room again. God can show up any place. It doesn't have to be church meeting. Yes. He, can show, he can show up in your, 
in your car. You know, many times I was driving in the car, and God showed up in my car, and I began to get drink drunk in the car. Thank God, not alcohol, yes. <laughs> but with the new wine of God. Yes. Amen. Sometimes I walk into the 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 uh, che- you know the locker room in the OR. You know, we have to change from the street clothes into the yeah. scrub. Yeah, the 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 yeah, another kind of cloth, more more clean. So when I walk in, I began to talk to God. God show up while I was changing my cloth, and I began to cry and have a goosebump. And God began to speak to me. You know why? God is not in the box. Yes. He doesn't have to only show up in the church. Yes. He can show up anywhere. Amen. Amen. But what you need to do is to draw near to God. Yes. This is a big misunderstanding in this society. In this society, people misunderstand that Christianity is about believing in Jesus, going to church one hour Sunday, knowing the scripture, and put the cross on the neck or on the earring. And that's it. No. Christianity is not just about claiming that I believe in Jesus. Going to church one hour Sunday, Christianity is about relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. It's about relationship with God. Amen. 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 How many? Let me ask Lee this question. Lee? Would you say this? Would you marry King? But you say that I just want her picture in my house. Would you marry King but have only her picture in the house? Huh? You want her. You want the presence of King Amen. in the house. Amen. This is the big problem in Christianity. Amen. Amen. Then most Christians in this society are trained just to have a picture of Jesus in their home. Or they have a nice picture of the cross in the church building. But they never encounter the presence of God. They never draw near to have a relationship with the presence of God Himself. Look, read the whole Bible. Read from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. It's all about the presence of God. Yes, it's all about people. You remember Moses say like this. One time, God was so upset with the children of Israel. Why Moses was up, up on the mountain? You remember the story? They make a golden cow. They gave their earring and everything and make a golden cow. And they say, they call that golden cow Jehovah, Yahweh. Wow. They call that golden cow, my God, Yahweh. They give the name of God to that golden cow. When God looked down from mountain, God was so mad at them. And do you know what God said in Exodus chapter 30, 33? God said, okay, Moses, I love your guy. I will send an angel to go with you to the promised land. But I am not going with you. You know how did God go with them at that time? God went with them with the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. That pillar of fire and of that cloud, I'm not teaching in that paper right now because I, I feel that I need to change direction. The, that pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire is the tangible presence of God. That tangible presence of God is, was leading them day by day. When the pillar of cloud stopped, they stopped. When the pillar of cloud and pillar of fire move, they move. They were led by the presence of God. They were led by the tangible, real presence of God. It's like Lee would not just go without the person king. He would not just have a picture in his car. He want the real person show up in the car and in his house. They were led by the presence of God at that time. But in Exodus chapter 33, 
God was so mad at Moses uh, at the children of Israel. He said, "Okay, I sent angel, big angel, to go with you, but I'm not going with you." You know what Moses say? Moses say like this in that chapter. He say, "God, my Lord, if your glory or your presence does not go with us, I am not going." You can see the whole Bible is about relationship with the person. I tell you, I love the presence of God. Yes. Amen. 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 Between going to Disney World, seeing Mickey Mouse, <laughs> and being in the church meeting and in the presence of God, I choose the presence of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Between Maui, 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 Waikiki, and Oahu, and the presence of God, I rather choose to be with the presence of God. Yes. Hallelujah. It's much. More, it's much better. Yes. I mean, I'm nothing wrong about going to Maui. Don't take me wrong. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to Big Island next year for vacation. So I, I love Hawaii. Don't take me wrong. I love Hawaii. But if I have to choose, only one choice to do. I rather choose the presence of God. But I bring the presence of God to. Big island Big with island. me. <laughs> In that presence, His presence will lead us. The pillar of cloud. You need the presence of God. He will lead you. Amen. He will give the light. The pillar of cloud will give the light to you where you need to go, what you need to do. Like I just mentioned about Jesus is in the boat. He will guide you. He will lead you. Not only that, the pillar of cloud will be like a a, a, a protection, the sun, especially in Arizona, you need that. Yes. You need the pillar of cloud Amen. because the sunshine is so, so, so strong, <laughs> especially in summer. Yes. Oh, Amen. when I walk out during, I came sometime in summertime, I was thinking about the pillar of cloud yes. in the middle of the street of Phoenix. I need that pillar of cloud. This, the sunshine here too yes. strong for me. Amen. Amen. And we need the pillar of fire. The, you know the pillar of fire protect, protected that when the army of Egypt came toward them, they saw that pillar of fire at night. They couldn't get in. They, they got stuck the, because if they, go, uh, they wanted to go into the, the children of Israel, they would be, they would be burned. Yes. But during the day, the pillar of cloud covered them. They could not see. The children, the, the, uh, the children of Israel. So what happened? The presence of God is your protection. Is your Amen. guidance. Is your campus. Is your direction of your life. Yes. I'm teaching you the key right now that most Christians in the world are missing. Hallelujah. They are missing. They just have church meeting. They just have nice singing. But where is the presence of God? I, I, I read a funny story about a man that he went to a very very nice cozy church somewhere in down south mm -hmm. this guy came in with tattoo long hair beard you know boot like a cowboy so when he walked in the archer told him that you know you cannot come back to this church if you don't cut your hair and take care of your clothes and look nice mm -hmm. you look unacceptable in this church so, you go home. The, then the pastor told him, you go home and pray about it, that you're going to change. Otherwise, you cannot come back here. Okay? He, he, he went back home, and he prayed about it. Then he came back to the church building to talk to the pastor. He said, you know, I pray about it. And God told me that I don't need to change. Because God never be here anyway. God never been in your church anyway. He told me, I never visit that church. They just have their own meeting. There's a human meeting. I tell you, I don't care how many people in this room. You can have 5,000 members sit in the room, but the presence of God is not there. I rather have these 15 people sit here but the presence of Amen. God is Hallelujah. here. Amen. 
It's not about the size of the church. Do you know that God looked from heaven? He, if God looked for size, He would reject that 120 people because it's small. Yeah, Is that right? God would reject the 12 disciples because only 12. <laughs> you have even more than 12 here. <laughs> God, God, God accepted that 12 because what they wanted to walk with Jesus. Yeah. They want the presence of Jesus. Amen. I want the presence of Jesus. Amen. I want Jesus to be in my home. I want the real person of Jesus to be in my church. Amen. That's why I don't worry about number. I just hooked up to the presence of God and I began to tell people that God loved me and God, what God did to me and people will get saved one by one mm -hmm. and the church will grow anyway. But it's not about, <laughs> the focus is not about the number. The yeah. focus is we love the presence of God. Yeah. We draw near to God. You know, if the presence of God is there, demon cannot be there. Amen. Sickness cannot be there. Curses cannot be there. Amen. Poverty cannot be there. Amen. You remember the story of Obed-Edom that he took in the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament represented the presence of God, the glory of God, the real tan. Okay, let me explain this theologically first. Maybe you, if you listen to this CD or this teaching later on, you may be confused what I'm talking about. Oh, Pastor Lau, the Bible says God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. Yes, God is everywhere, but in the Jewish understanding, if you read the Bible, it's, a dif it's different between omnipresence and kabod, the thick presence of God. The Jews or the Hebrews were not looking for omnipresence because God is everywhere, but they were looking for the tangible, thick, heavy presence of God. I'm not talking about omnipresence here. I'm talking about God show up. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm talking about God come and touch you. I'm talking about the big Holy Ghost show up in the room and you can feel Him and you can sense Him. Yeah. Do you know that Christianity is about experience too? Yeah. It's not Amen. about theology. Amen. Amen. What would it be if you say, I am married already. I'm married. And I went to honeymoon with her picture. <laughs> Do you have experience of your marriage? Yeah, with the picture. <laughs> that, that is, that is a, that the kind of Christianity of some Christian. Yeah. They just have a lot of picture, a lot of theology, yeah. but they never experience that embracement and the love and the touch of God. The presence of God that come and visit them in their room, in their life, and touch them and change them and cleanse them and talk to them and they talk to Him. I tell you, it's very simple. Not a big formula, nothing big deal. Amen. We need to draw near to God. Amen. We need to Hallelujah. come to church with hunger. Yes. Amen. 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 We need to get hungry for God. We need to recognize the person of God. Amen. 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 Look at what James chapter 4 verse 5 say. Or do you think that the scriptures say in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously. Before verse 8, draw near to God. The Bible say, the spirit who is in you and me yearns. What does it mean yearns? Yearns mean long for consistently and intensely. Have, a, have this picture in your mind that the Spirit of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, was standing inside you and talking to your spirit like this. I want you. I long to talk to you. I long to have a personal relationship with you. I long to communicate with you. I long to talk to you and listen to you. I long, I, 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 talk to me. Talk to me. Listen to me. I want to fellowship with you. Yes. That's how I feel with my, my, my uh, lovely wife. I long to be with her. I long to spend time with her. If you give me a mansion in Phoenix, 
a big mansion, 500, dollars home. They, I heard that right now the price of the home is so high. I mean, it just has gone up in the past few months. And you give me a nice home in Phoenix, Arizona, with nice sunshine here. I rather be in the desert, standing in outside the the, the mansion, but with Da on my side, yes. because I'm yearning to be with her. The same thing the Holy Spirit say. I don't want to be in the building. I don't want to be in that temple of Solomon. I don't want to be in that, uh, the, the holy of holies beside, be, behind the veil, you remember? Before Jesus died, the, the presence, the tangible presence of God, the kabod, the glory of God was only in the inner room, the holy of holies. Yeah. Until when Jesus say, gave up his spirit on the cross and he said, it's finished. At that moment, the veil, big veil before the holy place and the holy of holies or the most holy place was torn into two from the top to the bottom. And the Bible say, the Bible means that the Holy Spirit or the presence of God came out of that room and now the well in you. Amen. But you need to yearn for him, draw near to him. He is yearning for you jealously. In other words, he tried to say like this to you in this scripture. He said, I don't want you to love those house more than me. I don't want your mind to always think about something else and forget about me. How many people have seen people who have a problem with rejection? Uh, I, I, because as a pastor, I, I have a lot of members around the world. And I notice that some members really, really have a problem with self-image and securities that put security in life and you trace back you find that that person has a problem of rejection either parents reject or husband you know divorce or maybe when they were in the baby as a baby in the womb the mother he herself rejected him so when he was born or she was born she was born with that sense of rejection from the parents and these people tend to have insecurity, like when they sit in the church, look at me, pay attention to me. And they, they tend to look for attention. And these people tend to be uh, easily um, offended, very sensitive, too sensitive. They, we call, they have problem of rejection. I believe that if these people go to the Holy Spirit and ask Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, do you understand rejection? I believe the Holy Spirit will smile. The Holy Spirit is God. He will smile and say, I tell you, I, am more re- I have been rejected more than you. Yes. <laughs> I have been rejected in my church <laughs> all over the world because no one talk about me. No one even think about me. I yearn jealously to be with them, but they don't care about me. How many, what, when was the last time you were talking to the Holy Spirit inside you? When was the last time? Let me ask this question. Okay? If Sister Madel gave a person a ride to Mesa, half an hour drive, for example, and all the way you try to talk to that person, and that person completely ignore you. Just look outside the window and never talk to you. <laughs> and never want to talk to you or listen to you. How would you feel? Rejected. Rejection. That is what happening to the Holy Spirit in the church right now. We are rejecting the presence of the Spirit of God on the inside of us. We are sinning against God. I need to teach this lesson Amen. because I think this is what is needed in the body of Christ right now. Yeah. This is what the Christian in America need to hear, yeah. that we are rejecting the Holy Spirit. We making him sad. Amen. We grieve him. And that's why a lot of Christians are in trouble because we keep grieving God. We keep rejecting God. We, we never talk to God. I tell you, I talk to God almost 24 hours a day. When I wake up, that's why I heard the voice of God this morning. When I woke up, the first thing I say, Holy Spirit, thank you for having another day. Boom, God talked to me. 
you know what? I draw near to him first, and he draw near to me. Amen. He yearned jealously, jealously, wanting to talk to me and fellowship with me. Amen. He will guide you. He will lead you. Uh, even during surgery, I was talking to God. I think that's one of the reasons I have better outcome than a lot of doctors, because. During surgery, God was speaking to me all the time. He tell me what to do exactly. Cut this and that and open that and cut that bone out and, and do this and don't do that. He told me all the time because Amen. I fellowship with the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. I recognize His presence on, in, in the, on the inside of me and I talk to Him, I listen to Him all the time. My antenna, my spiritual antenna get up all the time. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Listen to him all the time. I recognize his presence all the time. Amen. 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 We are not ashamed of him. Yes. yes. I mentioned yesterday, you remember in uh, Lee's home, that the Old Testament Jews try to know the Father but reject Jesus. You cannot know the Father without Jesus. You remember Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No one can come to the Father Amen. except through me. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So in order to know the Father, you need to know Jesus. Yes. But today, the church try to know Jesus without knowing the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Big mistake. Yeah. Big mistake. Let me read the scripture to you. Big mistake. I'm looking. In John chapter 15, verse 26. But when the helper, who is the helper? Holy Spirit. The helper. When the helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. Who is me? Jesus. I tell you right now, you know, a lot of Christians claim to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know Jesus. Yeah, I read the full gospel. I read Matthew, John, Luke, and Mark. But if you ask them, I can say this 100%, you know why? Because I was there before. <laughs> yes. I was in that condition before. Before I got filled and touched by the Spirit of God. I know Jesus up here in my head. But his person, the person Jesus Christ, was so far away from me. It's like looking. Oh, Jesus. Oh, he looked like that. He kind of looked like that. Yeah. He, he, in my spirit, he's kind of far. But one day when the Spirit of God touched me in revival meeting, God touched me. I drank. I, I, I got drunk in the Holy Spirit. I laughed. I cried. I shaked by the power of God. It looked kind of scary. But after that day on, my relationship with Jesus has never been the same. I feel who Jesus is. I know deep in my spirit. Because the Holy Spirit testified of, the, of Jesus in my heart. I know him. And he knows me. And I get closer to him. You understand what I mean? It's interesting that Jesus say like this in the Bible. That it is good. Let me read this scripture. In John chapter 16 verse 7. I try to end soon. Because I know you're hungry. <laughs> hungry for the word. <laughs> John chapter 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. In John chapter 14, verses 15 to 16. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray that the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. Amen. You know, Jesus say like this. In these two, two scriptures come together, these two passages come together. He say, it's better for me to go. 
I, I believe that if you were in the shoes of the disciple at that time, Master, what are you talking about? I can rub your shoulder. I see you raise the dead up. When you preach, the roof open and the sunshine come down and somebody drop a paralytic man down. Oh, what exciting! And then we walk together on the street one day and then you stop the funeral procession and you say, open the coffin. Oh, exciting! Open to see the dead man. And then the dead man was raised up. And then I walk with you and then you cast out the, that, that, that region of demon out of that bad uh, madman at the tomb. And then I can see 2,000 swine jump into the sea and do- drown. Oh, exciting! <laughs> I'd rather be with you. Is that right? I mean, you, you, if you are in the meeting of Jesus, it's exciting. It's not very bored. <laughs> because people cry, demon come out, people get healed, people get out from the... From the coffin, oh, then he say, be peace, be calm, the storm. Yeah. Oh, then the storm stop. And then not only that, he said, come out, walk on the water with me. Yeah. Wow. I, I, actually, sometimes I complain to God, God, I, I, I like to walk with Jesus, like Peter and John and, and all this. It's fun, huh? It's, it's really exciting to walk with Jesus every day. Amen. Amen. But he said, it's better for me to go. Mm. I think in the mind of the disciple at that time, they were thinking, it's not true. I'd rather be with you. You stay here for a long time with us, okay? Mm-hmm. But think about this. Why he say it's better for me to go? Because, think about this. Who, who are the most, uh, who like to, who, in this room, who are the most talkative person like Peter in this room? I think Chris. <laughs> Chris, are you the talkative person? <laughs> Can you imagine if Jesus is in this room, you're going to walk to Jesus and talk to him, you need to wait on the line. Yeah. Is that right? And then when, when is your line, is your raffle ticket come up? Is your turn to walk, to come, come and talk to Jesus? Then Chris show up. He is so, so talkative. He said, oh, Jesus, by the way, hey, 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 I talked to him first. So you have to wait again. <laughs> is that right? No, and by the, by the time Chris talk, uh, talk, uh, stopped talking to Jesus, Jesus said, I'm tired, I need to sleep. <laughs> or then you have to wait until he wake up. By the time he wake up, he may be in Galilee and you are in Seattle, you have to fly to Galilee. <laughs> so in other words, it's better for him to go away because now another helper. Amen. The word another in the Greek language is alo. Alo means another, another one of the same kind. Oh. I don't understand this word until I become a surgeon. Have you ever heard the word autograph and allograph? How many people heard that word? Allo- autograph means if you want to feel somebody's neck, you cut his own bone and put in there. We call auto, graph, graph means something you put in, grafting. So auto means yourself. You put your own bone into your neck. But if you use the bone from another person, we call bone bank of bone from cadaver, from the dead people. We use, we use the term allo, another. The same kind is the bone, but from another person. So we call allo graft. Is that right? So, Jesus said, I have another person of the same kind like me. So, in other words, the Holy Spirit is another person, but exactly like Jesus. Amen. Amen. So now, and the word helper means, in the Greek language, is parakist, paraketos, which means, par, what does it mean, para? Para means on the side. Is that right? You know English word. Para means somebody stand on the side. Yeah. Kitos means helper. Another person, a person who stand by your side and help you all the time. Can I? I'm going to be with you all the time. I'm going to help you. So Jesus said, I am sending you the person of my kind. Exactly like me. 
and he will be with you, standing by your side and help you anytime you want. You can meet Jesus in Arizona, and I can meet Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus, in Seattle at the same time at even 2 a.m. Yes. I don't need to wait for Jesus to wake up. I can talk to the Holy Spirit at 2 a.m., at 3 a.m. in Thailand, in uh, Philippines, in Ma Mesa, in Chandler, in Gilbert. Anytime, any place, He is everywhere in you. Amen. Thank God Hallelujah. that Jesus went away and He sent another helper. Yes. So that we can have the Spirit of Jesus anywhere, anytime. Amen. Is Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus here in this room? Yes. yes. And he wants to touch you. Amen. He wants to help you. But the key is this. We need to be hungry. We need to draw near to him. We should not run away from him. Amen. I want to give you testimony that since Pastor Da and I and many members in Seattle Church have been touched by God again and again, our life have never been the same. Our faith rise up. Our understanding of the Word of God increase. We read the Bible. When we read the Bible, it has never been the same. One time, Pastor Da got touched by God in the car. She got start to get drunk in the car. When she opened the Bible and read, the letter in the Bible like almost jump out of the Bible. She saw the letter jump out. God becomes so real. Amen. Your relationship with God is restored. You fall in love with Jesus again. You are on fire. You become bold to share about the, the, the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Yes. This city cannot see the reality of Jesus until you allow Him to work through you first, uh, in you first. Amen. Jesus, the Spirit of God, needs to work in you before He can work through you. So let God work in you today. Amen. 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 And Amen. after that, He will work through you. And you may say like, oh, why have to work today? Because He cannot finish His work to change you overnight. Yeah. It will take time. <laughs> he will change you little by little from glory to glory to glory to glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Little by little until you become like Jesus. So today he's going to do some operation on you. He's going to change you, he's going to touch you. But you need to draw near to him Amen. and allow him to do it. Amen. He'll let the file of God come and change you Amen. and touch you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So now you understand the importance of the presence of God. Yes. Importance of the Holy Spirit. How many people say, I will not make Holy Spirit feel reject, rejection anymore? Amen. How many people say, I'm going to talk to the Holy Spirit more? Yes. I will listen to Him more. Yes. You know, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray without stop. You know, pray is... Let me ask this question. Is praying a dialogue or monologue? monologue. When you have a conversation with somebody, is a monologue or dialogue? Mean you listen and you talk. Yes. So you need to listen to God and you talk to Him back and forth. Yes. And sometimes when God speaks to you, it may not be an audible voice. It may <coughs> but just like just the sense, the still small voice or the sense inside you that God is speaking to you. Like when my wife looked at my eyes, she did not even have to open her mouth to say one word. I can write a literature three pages what you think that's how we are know each other so much when she just look at me I know already what she think in her mind we should have relationship with God at that level that when Holy Spirit just look at your eyes in your spirit the eyes of your spirit you know exactly what God thinks yes. are you close to God at that level yet you remember the Bible say Enoch knows God and walks with God mm. and God took him away mm. God wants you to know him and walk with him mm. it's not about just going to church and have a religious ceremony mm. it's about relationship mm. 
walking with the presence of God, knowing Him and walking with Him. Amen. Amen. I believe that if you really get this message, you really get this message. You listen to this teaching again and again. Your Christian life will never be the same. I mentioned to Pastor Dad this morning that as a pastor and as, as a preacher, it's so tempting to come in and teach you how to, how to, how to. Number one, number two, number three. If you how to become rich, how to become a good wife, how to become a husband, a good husband, how to become successful. It's so tempting, you know what? Because people like to hear that kind of message. How to. But instead of teaching you how to, I rather encourage you to walk with God and have a relationship with God. Amen. Because in Him, there is everything. Yeah. Amen. You can go out and do how to, but if without Him, you will not go anywhere. Mm. You need Jesus in your boat, yeah. walking with Jesus. Having a relationship with Jesus, Amen. Amen. You believe that this church is going to be the place that people come Amen. and encounter the presence of God, Amen. like the burning bush on the mountain. Yes. yes. How many people believe that God, you're going to bring souls into this house, and they will encounter God here, Hallelujah. and everyone who walk into our church, their life will never be the same. There will be change, not because we have a great picture, yeah. but because they encounter God in this house. Amen. That one touch of God will change you more than listening to a great preacher ten years. Yeah. Just one touch of God. Hallelujah. That's what happened to Moses. Yeah. He was touched by God at that burning bush, and he was totally changed. That's happened to me too. Pastor Da can be a witness how much God changed me. A touch of God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we believe, Lord, that this message will really change people's life today. And Lord, may your touch come. You say in the Bible, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then they appear to them, divided the tongue as a fire, and one sat on a, upon each of them, yes. and they were filled with the Holy Spirit, and speak with other tongues. As the spirit enabled them, Father, in that upper room, people encountered the presence of God, and after that day, they changed the whole world in that generation. Lord, Father, even though in this room we don't have a lot of people, but you don't need a lot. Even you gave Gideon only 300 people to win the battle. We don't need a lot. We just need somebody who completely devoted and hungry for the presence of God. And that city will be changed. Today, Father, your people will be filled with the Holy Spirit. And they will encounter God. Lord, we draw near to you today. And you will draw near to us. You yearn just generously for us. And we are hungry for you. We surrender. We yield. In Jesus' mighty name. My dear brother and sister, when God touch you, don't try to maintain the control of your own life. Let God control you. Let God marinate you with His power. Let God fill you with His presence. If you give up your own control, the control of your own life, and let God control you, he will do mighty thing through you. In the touch of God is about allowing God 
to take control of your life. It's about allowing God to fill you. It's about give up your own control, the control of your own life, and let God do whatever He wants in you. May God touch everyone in this room today. May you fill them. May you anoint them. May the, the angels of God come into this house and pour the grace and the anointing upon every single one. Impart faith. Impart the grace. Impart faith and anointing and gifts upon this church. Lord, build your church here, Father. Give to them what is needed at this time. May this church give you glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Like a woman. Yes, Lord. Like a blind man waiting patiently, pressing through the crowd. Suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came. And rescue me. Suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came and set me free. Why don't we open heart, our heart, get hungry for God? God, you can come down and do whatever you want. I surrender to you today. Come and change my life, Lord. Today, the history book of my life and in this church will be changed. You will, Lord, move me to another level. Yes, Lord. Through the crowds, suddenly a touch from heaven. Jesus came and rescued me. Suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came and set me free. Suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came and rescued me. Suddenly, a touch from heaven. Jesus came and set me free. Jesus came and set me free. And set me free. And set me free. May the fire of God come upon this house right now. May the outpouring of the Spirit of God come. May heaven be open and fill this house with the Spirit of God. May the hungry heart be filled. Let us press in together. Press in. Press in together. Open your heart. Drink the new wine. Drink the new wine of God. 
God never forces anyone. You need to be the one who draw near to God and drink the new wine of God yourself. You go to the throne room of God. Open yourself to God. Let God fill you up, like in the upper room. Forget about the past. Forget about doctrine. You just get hungry. Get hungry for the things of God. It's about hunger. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. p a r o k s i l a k a n t a r a y a l a b a s h u r a n t a r a d i n a r a b a b a b a s h u k u y a l a b a b a Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Michael, come out here. Hallelujah. I want to lay hand on you and impart the anointing upon your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. m a r c y come here to m a r c y Join hand with your son. Join hand with your son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Drink, receive. Hallelujah. Receive by faith right now. Hallelujah. Father in Jesus mighty name. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Drink, drink, drink. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust this message has ministered to you. If you would like more information about New Hope International Church or other teaching series, please contact us at 206-275-1042 or visit our website online at www.newhopeinternationalchurch.org. You may also write to us at the following address: New Hope International Church, 9170 Southeast 64th Street. Mercer Island, Washington, 98040. Thank you very much. 